What a postcard we have for you today from the Roman city of leisure and pleasure in Wales. It has barracks, swimming pools, it has everything the Roman legionnaire ever wanted and some say what the Welsh girls desired. We're in Caerleon. Caerleon, Monmouthshire is a surprise town that bursts with Roman antiquity as Dr. Russell Rees exudes. So what was the, the importance of this amphitheatre? What did that make Caerleon? Well, it made it what uh, I have been telling most people, a great leisure centre. This was a sports centre outside the city with its three public baths and which all sorts of uh, rest and recreation from. Caerleon was the great recreation centre of Roman Britain. And of course it became the, in the, in the words of the people who live in Caerleon, the round table of King Arthur. It was known as the round table field until it was rediscovered to be a Roman amphitheatre by Christopher, Sir Christopher Wheeler. It's the only building in the Arthurian legends which existed at the right time of the fifth century. There's no other building in, in anywhere, Glastonbury, Tintagel, that are, that is fifth century, except for this uh, ex-Roman amphitheatre in Killian. Uh, do people agree with you about Killian being the centre for the Arthurian legend? Many people do, and uh, uh, they do on the basis of the works of Tennyson, on the works of, uh, of uh, even Mallory, and the works of uh, 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 Geraldus Cambrensis on the works of Geoffrey of Monmouth, who described King Arthur being crowned in Caerleon. And of course, it's the logical place where it would be. King Arthur was a true Welshman who fought off the English and uh, eventually succeeded in the Battle of Baden to give us 50 years of peace and the frontiers roughly in the Seven Sea. This is authentically the court of King Arthur, Camelot. Now, if I said to you there was a league table of Roman sites and places in Britain, where would Caerleon Caerleon would figure very highly. The three great Roman military cities were York and Chester and Caerleon. The thing that makes Caerleon unique is the only Roman great city that grew to be a village. So what we have here is demonstrably to be seen. What is in Chester can't be seen anymore. What is in York is in the museum. As you come to Caerleon, you see it. You see the plan of the village, the town, and you see its leisure centres, and you see its site. You sit here and we look outside, and there's a wonderful natural amphitheatre, yes. which is the reason the Romans chose this uh, crossing of the River Usk to establish their military city. I have never seen anything like this in my life, the Barrett. Well, this is unique, unique to it. I mean, it existed in Chester and York, but it's been overgrown by, by, by growth of cities. But in Killian, we have all this lead ready to be seen. And what we should be doing, of course, is to make it more visible, help people see it, rebuild parts of it. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as you tell people that you've done it. And that's what I'm about now. I'm trying very desperately to rebuild the main gate to Killian City. These are for, for stoves and things, you see. Oh, just there. In the barrack blocks, there were eight well, men. This is incredible. You can see the cubicles. You can Captain. see the rooms. To each cubicle would be eight men, and the other cubicle would be for their arms and weapons or whatever. And in between there'd be a sort of meeting ground, so they faced upon each other. It's a little village of itself, you know. The, and as you can see, it's built of stone. It was meant to last. Yes. And it lasted 300 years. That's almost longer than the United States lasted. So why was it a barracks? What were they defending against if there were oh, attacks? They came in AD 74. The Romans came here and they came over the, the, the top of the hill. On top of that hill there was the British camp. Where all the that, houses are That there. was the ancient British camp. 17 and three quarter acres surrounded by massive uh, 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 earthen walls and things. So they defended from the heights. But when the Romans arrived, they arrived with a new military technology, covered in armour, with short stabbing swords, piercing spears and a large shield. They came and stood and waited for people to attack them because they had the strength. They could afford to have a fortress in the valley. The ancient Britons had throwing spears, long swords, and they needed the hills to defend themselves. The uh, ancient Britons were faced by a magnificent body of disciplined, new technology, 
really serious military opponents, something they'd never seen before. Well, now you've heard about the Romans, let's stroll back to Russell's own Cerleon Camelot and hear Arthurian tales of King Arthur, Queen Guinevere and Sir Galahad. When the Romans left the city, they left to defend Rome and everything in the city was left as it was. So Cerleon was a major place described by Geraldus Cambrensis as a place of gilded palaces, of, of uh, uh, air conditioning, central heating, uh, sanitation. So it was the obvious place for Camelot. And the fact that is important 